Hello all, welcome to this video on machine learning. Today I'll be talking about maximum likelihood estimation of some distributions, bias and variance. Let's begin. We'll be discussing three distributions whose maximum likelihood estimation of parameters will be done here. We'll begin with Bernoulli density. In a Bernoulli distribution, there are two outcomes, an event occurs or it doesn't. For example, an instance is a positive example of the class or it is not. The event occurs and the Bernoulli random variable x takes the value 1 with probability p and the non-occurrence of the event has probability 1 minus p and this is denoted by x taking the value 0. This is written as p of x given by p raised to x into 1 minus p the whole raised to 1 minus x where x will take values 0 or 1. Probability is the measure of how certain we are of a particular event that it will occur in a specific instance. Whereas expected value is the average outcome of a series of random events with identical odds being repeated over a long period of time. The expected value and variance can be calculated as expectation of x given by sigma x, x into p of x. We have the values of x and p of x from the previous slide. On substituting, we get the value p. Variance of x is given by sigma x, x minus expectation of x, the whole square into p of x. On substituting the values, we get p into 1 minus p. p is the only parameter and given an independent and identically distributed sample x, which is given by xt, where t varies from 1 to n and xt is an element of the set 0, 1. We want to calculate its estimator p cap. Now, log likelihood is given by L of p given x, which is log of pi t equal to 1 to n, p raised to x raised to t into 1 minus p, the whole raised to 1 minus x raised to t. Now, applying log to each of the element, we get sigma t xt log p plus n minus sigma t xt log 1 minus p. Now, p cap that maximizes the log likelihood can be found by solving for dl by dp as equated to 0. Now, p cap is given by sigma t xt by n. The estimate for p is the ratio of number of occurrences of the event to the number of experiments. Remembering that if x is Bernoulli with p, expectation of x equal to p and as expected the maximum likelihood estimator of the mean is the sample average. Now we will look into multinomial density. Consider the generalization of Bernoulli where instead of two states the outcome of a random event is one of the k mutually exclusive and exhaustive states, for example, classes, each of which has a probability of occurring as pi with sigma i equal to 1 to k, pi equal to 1. Let x1, x2, etc., xk be the indicator variables where xi is 1 if the outcome is state i and 0 otherwise. Now, p of x1, x2, etc., xk is given by pi equal to i equal to 1 to k, pi raised to xi. Let us say we do n such independent experiments with outcomes x given by xt, where t is equal to 1 to n, where xi raised to t is given as 1 if the experiment t chooses state i and 0 otherwise with sigma i xi raised to t equal to 1. Now the MLE of pi is given by pi cap which is sigma t xi raised to t by n. The estimate for the probability of state i is the ratio of experiments with outcome of state i to the total number of experiments. There are two ways one can get this. If xi is 0 or 1 then they can be thought of as k separate Bernoulli experiments or one can explicitly write the log likelihood and find pi that maximize it. Now we look into Gaussian or normal density. x is Gaussian or normally distributed with mean expectation of x given which is equivalent to mu and variance which is equivalent to sigma square denoted as n of mu comma sigma square. If its density function is p of x given by 1 by root of 2 pi into sigma exponential of 
minus x minus mu the whole square by 2 sigma square, where x varies from minus infinity to infinity. Given a sample x, which is xt, where t is equal to 1 to n with xt, which is approximately belonging to the density n of mu comma sigma square, the log likelihood is L of mu comma sigma given x is given by minus n by 2 log of 2 pi minus n log sigma minus e t x raised to t minus mu the whole square by 2 sigma square. The MLE that we find by taking the partial derivatives of the log likelihood and setting them to 0 are m which is given by sigma t x raised to t by n and s square which is given by sigma t x raised to t minus m the whole square by n. Now we will look into a problem. Suppose x1, x2, etc, xn are independent and identically distributed random variables with density function given as this. We are asked to find the maximum likelihood estimate for sigma. Now the maximum likelihood estimate is taken by taking the log of likelihood. Now log of likelihood means that we need to take the log of this expression. So log like likelihood L of sigma is given by sigma I equal to 1 to n minus log 2 minus log sigma minus modulus of x i by sigma. Now on taking the derivative of this with respect to theta and computing it as equal to 0, we will get this expression which is L dash of sigma which is given by sigma i equal to 1 to n minus 1 by sigma plus modulus of x i by sigma square which is equal to, now on opening the brackets, now this is repeated for n cases. So this can be written as minus n by sigma plus sigma i is equal to 1 to n mod of x i by sigma square equal to 0. Now MLE of sigma on reducing this expression we get sigma i equal to 1 to n mod of x i by n. Now we look into another problem. A coin is tossed 100 times and lands heads 62 times. What is the MLE of x equal to 1 where probability of heads is asked? So we are given the number of heads we got for 100 tosses. We will take it as alpha 1 which is 62 and we will take the number of tails we got as alpha 2. Now sum of alpha 1 and alpha 2 will give us the total number of tosses. So alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is 100. Now we need to find the MLE estimate which is theta cap for the probability where x is equal to 1 that is when it is heads. So I will do it by dividing alpha 1 by alpha 1 plus alpha 2 which is 62 by 100. So the estimate will be 0.62. Now we look into evaluating an estimator using bias and variance. Let x be a sample from a population specified up to a parameter theta and let d equal to d of x be an estimator of theta. To evaluate the quality of this estimator, we can measure how much it is different from theta that is dx minus theta the whole square. But since it is a random variable that is it depends on the sample, we need to average this over possible x and consider r of d comma theta. That is the mean square error of the estimator d which is defined by r of d comma theta giving expectation of d of x minus theta the whole square. Now the bias of an estimator is given as b theta of d which is expectation of d of x minus theta. If b theta of d is equal to 0 for all theta values then we say that d is an unbiased estimator of theta. For example with x raised to t drawn from some density with mean mu the sample average m is an unbiased estimator of the mean mu because Expectation of m which is given by expectation of sigma t x raised to t by n. On expanding we get 1 by n into sigma t 
expectation of x raised to t. So on substituting, we get n mu by n, which is mu. This means that though on a particular sample m may be different from mu, if we take many such samples xi and estimate many mi, which is equal to m of xi, their average will be close to mu as the number of such samples increase. That is, m is also a consistent estimator, that is, variance of m tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. Now, variance of m is given by variance of sigma t x raised to t by n. So, on expanding, we get 1 by n square because it is variance into sigma t variance of x raised to t. Again, substituting values, we get n sigma square by m square, which is sigma square by n. As n, the number of points in the sample gets larger, m deviates less from mu. So now let us see s square, that is the MLE of sigma square, which is sigma t x raised to t minus m, the whole square by n, which is sigma t x t, the whole square minus n m square by n. Now expectation of s square is given by sigma t expectation of x raised to t the whole square minus n into expectation of m square by n. Now given that variance of x is given by expectation of x square minus expectation of x the whole square, we get expectation of x square as variance of x plus expectation of x the whole square. Now we can write expectation of x raised to t square as sigma square plus mu square and expectation of m square as sigma square by n plus mu square. Then plugging these in, we get expectation of s square as n into sigma square plus mu square minus n into sigma square by n plus mu square by n, which is n minus 1 by n into sigma square which is not equal to sigma square, which shows that s square is a biased estimator of sigma square. n by n minus 1 into s square is an unbiased estimator. However, when n is large, the difference is negligible. This is an example of an asymptotically unbiased estimator whose bias goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. Now, the mean square error can be rewritten as follows, which is r of d comma theta given by expectation of d minus theta the whole square. So now we insert two values into it that is minus expectation of d and plus expectation of d. Now we will expand it as expectation of d minus expectation of d the whole square plus expectation of d minus theta the whole square plus 2 into expectation of d minus theta into d minus expectation of d. Again, rearranging, we get expectation of d minus expectation of d, the whole square, plus expectation of expectation of d minus theta, the whole square, plus 2 of expectation of expectation of d minus theta into d minus expectation of d. Now, again, rearranging the elements, we finally get expectation of d minus expectation of d the whole square plus expectation of d minus theta the whole square. Now this is the variance and this is the bias square value. The two equalities follow because expectation of d is a constant therefore expectation of d minus theta is also a constant and because expectation of d minus expectation of d can be written as expectation of d minus expectation of d which will be equal to 0. We will see that the first term here is the variance as I said before. Now that will measure how much on average di will vary around the expected value and the second term being the bias that measure how much the expected value varies from the correct value theta. We then write the error as the sum of these two terms that is the variance and the square of the bias which is given by r of d comma theta as variance of d plus b theta of d the whole square. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.